Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to her Panwo TV. Oh, right, it's Saturday morning, and a whole day of the conferences has already finished. Um, normally, well, last year, you know, this will be the actual start of the conference, but it's, um, we, you know, this is a three day event this time, and so we've already had, we've all, so there's been one day passed already, so you get a bit of extra this year. Um, well, it's about half past seven now, and I'm pretty tired. I only just woke up, getting ready for another big event today. More and more fun things come in today. Um, yesterday was really, really fantastic. It went on till nine o'clock at night, or just about half past nine. Then we all went out and had a Chinese meal and sort of half us trying to eat without falling asleep. Um, that's why I made that video about the owl, or you saw the owl statue. Um, I mean, I've got a lovely room here in the, um, I'm actually in the University Hall of Residence. It's a bit different from last year. I mean, I was last year I was in, um, we were all in this um, very, very old and rickety building with um, creaky stairs and lots of cobwebs and things. Today we're in this ultra modern kind of apartment block and I'll just show you the view from my window. Look at that, I'm on the sixth floor. And that's nice, isn't it? Uh, students live quite well these days, I'll tell you. Yeah, look at that. It's all big thought ceiling window here. <clears throat> anyway, um, Richard D. Hall was the was um, spoke yesterday afternoon after Nick Pope, and um, that was really good. Um, he's now he's a good mate of mine. He's really really great. He's um, he's a guy who's uh, got a lot of brains and a lot of guts. And he's not scared to speak out. And he talked about he's not scared to he's not scared to name names within the UFO movement, who he thinks are muddy in the waters and and um, are obstructing the path to real truth. Um, you know, he names names. He talks about Bufora. This is an organisation I had some dealings with, I reported by citing to them. Um, and the lady I spoke to in Bufora was all right, but Richard gets a bit annoyed because Richard was going to speak at Bufora, you see, and um, they kind of, they um, stopped him on some trumped up excuse when um, because Andy Roberts apparently was going to be there and um, well uh, Richard and Andy don't get on because um, well as you know I've, I've reviewed my book I've reviewed um, Andy Roberts's book I'll put a link in the description box um, it's called um, um, UFO Down which is about the Bellwin Mountains incident now Andy thinks there's no ET presence at the Bellwin Mountains incident I don't I think he's wrong? And I wrote my review, and I said so. And Richard's done so too, and Andy don't like it. I mean, I haven't got seen Andy since that, but I mean, Andy might be a bit annoyed with me as well. <laughs> too bad. Um, you know, these um, the he talked. Richard talks about the animal mutilation case as well, which is very, very um, disturbing. Um, I've seen um, David Caton live at Probe before, where he talked about. Um, we talked about this as well. Sorry, Tom and Mark Hulse talked about this as well. Um, what's going to happen is animals keep turning up all over the countryside, sometimes farm animals, sometimes wild animals, um, with very strange injuries. They're dead with very strange injuries, like surgical marks all over them. The blood's been drained from them. Burn marks, you know, look. No one knows exactly how these injuries were inflicted. But it's extremely um, disturbing, and, and there's many theories about who's doing this and why. Some people say it's extraterrestrial, some people say it's government. None of the theories fit. There's no answer to this, in this at the moment, and we're nowhere near finding an answer, really missing something. Um, anyway, this, this evening, or sorry, this afternoon, Rich is going to premiere his new movie, which is this one. The, I bought a DVD of it already, the Berwin UFO cover-up. It's going to premiere this afternoon. Now Richard already told me what this film is about, he asked me to keep it quiet, but by the time you watch this, um, the video, the, well, the premiere will be over, so I can, I can tell you now what it's about. Um, basically, Richard and Scott Felton, another friend of mine, who have investigated this, have gone back to the Bedouin Mountains UFO area, where, the, where it happened, and they've done some investigating, and they found evidence, of, they found more evidence of a landing of some kind of craft including marks on the landscape um, 
which point to the fact that a large object did land there. Um, there's no, um, you know, the thing is this, this is, Andy Roberts is not going to like this because this really does blow his theory out of the water. Uh, so um, this should be, it should be good. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what it's about. I've kept, I've kept this secret for a number of months and um, now I can tell you the truth. But I'm going to watch this myself later on, privately when I get home. Now, Andrew Johnston was another speaker who was up. Now, he's... Now, I think Andrew Johnston was talking about... He very much sort of summarised the... The whole... Um, the whole disclosure project to, up till now. He talked about the Drake equation um, and SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And uh, former attempts at disclosure in the past, for instance, the, the Cometa report and the disclosure project with Stephen Greer. Now these are attempts at disclosure which haven't worked, but um, this doesn't mean to say that it wants to, which still won't happen according to um, Andrew and people like Richard Dolan and um, Stephen Bassett. Now, um, the thing about it is, um, Carl Sagan is a, is a guy who sort of like was once a firm believer in UFOs, then changed his mind and became a skeptic. Um, now, there's, yeah, there's been. Other sort of instance like, um, yeah, then, where am I? Oh, I'll have to find a better way of making notes. Right, Andrew Johnson. Yeah, there's other been other incidents, you know, like the Roswell incident is one of many, that's what he said. Um, that's the thing, there's been, there's been crashes of um, craft at... Um, Dating back a long way. I mean, the earliest recorded is actually eighteen ninety seven, which is um, which is in um, Texas, a place in Texas called Aurora, where there was a crash of some object. It was described as an airship because they didn't use the word um, UFO in those days. And um, yeah, there's even meant to be a body buried in the local cemetery of a man from Mars. They didn't say like alien. These you could things. Anything extraterrestrial in those days was called from Mars because the the Definitive, you know, a lot of people were reading the book War of the Worlds, which is very popular, a very popular book in those days. And so um, it was always thought that extraterrestrials came from Mars. Um, yeah, it's very funny. Um, um, he, he said something very funny. A child, actually, a little boy called... Uh, a little um, kid called Russell in Belfast once wrote to Bill Clinton, saying, is, is there such thing... Did a UFO crash at Roswell? And is there a body on... Have you got a body? And Bill Clinton responded... He actually responded in his speech and said, well, if that's the case, then I don't know about it. Oh, well, like like he would know, you know. People always think the president's going to know. Well, it's not, you know. Um. Anyway, there's... um. He's given me a lot of stuff to look up here, you know, about... um. You know, about disclosure. I mean, there's... Andrew talked about something called positive and negative disclosure. Um, I made it, I put it in the notes here. I'm not sure, sure why. The problem was, you know, I was falling asleep during Andrew Johnson's speech. Now, I, I mean, I don't want Andrew to think this was because I thought he was, you know, he's boring because he's not. He's very interesting, but it's just I was really, really tired and I was, good, I was sort of drifting off to sleep. The thing is, I was on the front row as well, and you know, I felt embarrassed to do that because I thought, well, you know, the problem is if you're on the front row. Um, People are going to, you know, he's going to see me. So I wonder, when I, when, um, during the next speech, I sat further back. And I sort of, so when I nodded off, I was less conspicuous. Yeah, I don't mean to do that. It's just, it's really tiring sometimes, you know. All right. Um, the next speaker was David Griffin. Yeah, he's a good old David Griffin. He's a mate of mine. He is. He's cool. Um, now he's talking about the, he sort of summarised the disclosure process from now on. And he talked in the same way, that Andrew T Johnson says there's positive and negative disclosure. Maybe David is talking about the same thing. He talks about um, something called Strand 1 and Strand 2 disclosure. Strand 1 is government operations. Now, personally, I'm, I'm rather dubious where there is could ever be such a thing as government disclosure. Um, as, I've, I've, as I've said before, um, it seems a bit... Um, I doubt whether governments could ever disclose because they're... It, it's something that society doesn't have the problem to deal, doesn't have the capacity to deal with. Our social structures and cultural structures don't have the capability to deal with it. And governments would, you know, would basically be an act of suicide if they went to disclosure, as I said before. That the strand two disclosure is 
private disclosure between ETs and individuals or non-governmental organisations. And a good example is Dr. Jonathan Reed. Um, now he's a, a guy, I'm going to write more about him actually, because this is a guy who, I, who has very largely been denounced as a hoax and he was walking in the woods one day with his dog in America, I mean Washington State, and um, he came across a little alien. The dog attacked the alien, Reed defended the dog by attacking the alien with a big stick, knocked its, broke its head open, killed it, or apparently killed it, and came back to life later. That's a long story. But it's been denounced as a hoax, Reed's been denounced as an imposter, and I believed that for a while, unfortunately. I'm not proud of myself. Um, I fell for the Doug and Dave hoax once, too. Um, but um, I think Reed's genuine, you know. Um, and um, there's also another thing I'm going to have to look in later, because um, in, I think it was 19... In the 1980s, there was a coup in Grenada. Now, I didn't know this. I remember it on the news when I was a kid, but there was a very... The, the, apparently, the president of Grenada was involved in some kind of disclosure. I'm not sure what. He was involved in the disclosure project. Maybe the coup in Grenada was related to that. And we often see that. I mean, like, um, that saw these political events maybe connected with the UFO issue. I mean, there's been talk lately that John, the JF, uh, John F. Kennedy's assassination was based on his interest in UFOs. Um, now that could be, that could relate to something that happened before. Because I mean, Stephen Bassett, who is here today, and here this weekend, has spoken before at other events that I've attended. I first saw him in Liverpool in 2009. Now, um, he said at the time, I remember him saying at the time, that disclosure, this was just after Obama had been elected, and I remember him saying quite clearly that um, disclosure would happen within the next six months. Now I'm, um, well, maybe that's a bit dubious, but um, the, the rumour was, you see, what happened was, I mean, soon after Obama's election, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for all these things he hasn't done. Uh, well, they gave it to Kissinger, so if they, gave, if they give it to Henry Kissinger, why not Genghis Khan or someone? Anyway, for some reason, I don't know why, Barack Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> so, he went to Oslo uh, in, um, the, in November of um, last year to pick up his prize. Now, there's a lot of rumours going around that Obama would make a disclosure announcement during his Nobel Prize acceptance speech. So we were all glued to it, including me, I must say. I was, in, I was watching it because I thought, I, I didn't think it was likely, but I thought, well, what if I'm wrong? You know, I always think, you know, what if I'm wrong? Anyway, um, Obama did his speech. There was no disclosure. But what happened the day before then in Norway? Remember? The Norway spiral. This big swirl of lights in the sky. That, every, you know, was later denounced as a Russian rocket. And everyone said, oh, it's only a rocket. That's cool. Um... Maybe there was some connection. Was that a warning to Obama to keep his mouth shut? Was that the aliens intervening or something? They, maybe they thought that was not the right time? Who knows? But anyway, it wasn't a bloody rocket. That's, you know, rockets don't, you know, and rockets don't make those sort of patterns in the sky. What's more, it, it's a bit suspicious that the Russians immediately owned up to it. You know, the, the Russians, Russians don't normally just confess to fire, you know, it, you've got to be aware of a cover story that is too eagerly told. You know, as soon as the spiral went up, the Russians went, Oh, it was us! We did it! It was our rocket! We fired a rocket over Norway's airspace! Sorry! No, no, no. That if, 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 the, if it had been a Russian rocket, there'd be a very, very long process where they would deny it, and there'd be more pressure put on it, and they'd deny it again, a little bit more, etc, etc, etc. No, no, it wasn't a Russian rocket. Um... Anyway, um, what else? I'm going to have to stop for a minute because I've got to do something, and I'll talk. I'll come back and talk to you about the about the, the last speech of the evening, which absolutely raised the roof. See you in a minute.